Jumbo. This is General Economics with Kehumba. In this video, we are going to discuss the law of demand. What does it state? The law of demand argues that there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded of a commodity, ceteris paribas. Ceteris paribas here means holding other factors constant. What we are implying is, should the product of should the price of the product go up, would expect the demand for the same product to increase to go down. However, should price go down, the demand for the product will go up. You notice that price and quantity demanded are moving in the opposite direction. This is what we are referring to as the inverse relationship or the negative relationship. When one is going in one direction, say increasing, the other one is going down. This inverse price demand relationship is based on other things remaining the same. Uh, and that would mean there are certain assumptions that should be taken if the law was to hold. And the first assumption is that you've got no changes in tastes and preferences of the consumer. Uh, of course, if the tastes and preferences of the consumer were to change, then we'd expect them to demand different quantities of the same product, even though price has not changed. Similarly, we do not expect the income of the consumer to change. We expect it to remain constant. Further, the, the, we, there are no expectations on changes in customs. Neither do we expect that those commodities are the ones that would confer distinction on the user, that is, goods of conspicuous consumption. The product should not have any substitute. We equally should not have any changes in prices of related commodities, and neither should there be a change in quality of the product. Last but not the least, we do not expect consumer habits to change. We expect them to remain the same. This and other conditions are the conditions in which the law of demand operates. If you look at them, you will notice that these conditions that you are seeing do not change are actually the other factors that influence demand other than the price of the product. Now, if they change, even if it's just one of these assumptions, then the law will stop operating. We shall see in a different video what happens when the law stops operating. We explain the law of demand with the help of a demand schedule and a demand curve. A demand schedule is a listing of all commodities a consumer is willing and able to buy at various prices over a period of time. In other words, a demand schedule is simply a list showing the various prices and the various commodities bought at those prices. And then the demand curve is basically a graphical representation of the various quantities of a commodity that the consumer is able and willing to buy at various prices over a given period of time. When we are talking of demand schedule and demand curve, we would want to distinguish an individual demand schedule and a market demand schedule. We would want to distinguish an individual demand curve and a market demand schedule or curve. You'll recall in the previous video we mentioned, and if you've not watched it, it is important to look at it, that an individual consumer demand refers to quantities of a commodity which is being demanded by him at various prices over a period of time, other things remaining the same. So the quantities that an individual consumer demands, then that would be an individual demand. 
we show individual demand on an individual demand curve or and an individual demand schedule. The two are presented in table one for individual demand schedule and figure two for individual uh, demand curve. We, we have this schedule. Remember you said it's just basically a listing. We have the various places that the commodity is being sold and the various quantities that the consumer is willing to buy at various places. You, you'd notice that when price is nine, the consumer, sorry, when price is six, the consumer is only willing to buy 10 units of a commodity or is only demanding 10 units of a commodity. But when price goes down to five, he buys 20 units, he buys more. And you notice as price goes down, the more of a commodity that is demanding. You see price, when price is decreasing, quantity demanded is increasing. And when price is going up, quantity demanded is going down. And this is what we refer to as the inverse relationship. Now, this is what we refer to as an individual demand schedule. We could represent this information on an individual demand curve. On an individual demand curve, which is a graphical representation of the various quantities that a consumer demands, is shown with price being indicated on the on, on the x axis, on the y axis, sorry, and quantity demanded on y axis. You notice that when price is six, the consumer demands 10 units of the commodity at point B. And when price goes down to one, corresponding to point U on the demand curve, the consumer demands eight units of the commodity. You'll notice that the demand curve is drawn sloping downward from left to right and it has a negative slope. Then of course, we've got the market demand schedule. We know in the market, we don't just have one consumer, we have many consumers. And the total um, quantity demanded by all consumers in the market is what would show the market demand. And the market demand is depicted by a market demand schedule and the market demand curve. The market demand curve is basically a graphical representation of the total of the various quantities demanded by all the individuals in the market at various prices. Well, as market demand schedule is simply a listing. And you're showing the two uh, in figure in table two for the for the market demand schedule and figure two for the market demand curve. In this, we are assuming that there are three individuals, A, B, and C. And we notice on our market demand schedule, we've got individual demand for individuals A, B, and C, and the market demand, which is the sum of the individual demand, sum of, individ sum of demand for A plus that of B and that of C. Now you notice that when price is six, individual A demands 10 units, 10 units, individual B, 20 units, and individual C, that 40 units. Now the market demand is the sum demand of all those quantities at that price. In our case, we notice that the sum the market demand when price is six is 70 units. When price is five, the individual A demands 10 units, B 40 units, and C 60 units, making up a market demand of 120. We can similarly show the market demand for all these, for, for all these prices by simply adding the various quantities that are demanded in order to add up with the market demand schedule. Now, this, this market demand can also be represented by a market demand curve. 
and we've got the various curves that we've drawn or that we've come up with. We have the individual demand curve for individual A, then the one for individual C, B, and eventually C, and then the sum of all of them would make up market demand. One thing that I don't want us to notice is that the market demand curve is flatter compared to the steeper individual demand curves. And the reason for this is because the market demand is a sum total of all the demand curves. I mentioned earlier that the demand curve slopes from left to right and it has a negative slope throughout the length. But why is this so? There are quite a number of reasons for this, but I'll mention two for now. The first one is because of the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. That one we mentioned. Consumers will always be willing to buy more when price is less and less when price is high. The other reason is because of the application of the law of diminishing marginal utility. We've not talked about marginal utility now, but we shall be talking about it in a subsequent video. So I would uh, urge you to keep on checking on the videos. But when you talk of utility, utility is a satisfaction a consumer derives out of consum consuming a unit. If he consumes a number of units, then he read up with total utility. If he consumes a number of units, he read up with total utility. Now, marginal utility is the additional to the total utility as a result of consuming an extra unit of a commodity. Now, we shall see that we have a law which is known as the law of diminishing returns. And basically what this means is that as a consumer consumes more of a commodity, the satisfaction that he gets from successful units, the additional satisfaction, the additional utility, the marginal utility diminishes. And, and therefore, the less and less utility he gets, the less and less he'll be willing to pay for that commodity. But like I said, this point number two will be subject to a different video. That's the end of this particular video. As always, I'm grateful for watching. Kindly subscribe, like, leave a comment, and even share with your friends. This has been General Economics with Kehumba. Thank you.